Let's take a look at graphs of functions. We're basically graphing uh, functions the same way we graph regular xy equations. The only difference is instead of having an ordered pair labeled xy, we say it's x and f of x. So our f of x here is really just another name for our y value. Then we plot the points and complete our graph. So here's an example. Instead of being y equals x squared minus 5, it says f of x is equal to x squared minus 5. We want to start by making a table of values. Now we can do it the old-fashioned by hand way, x and then y, and then pick some x's, some negatives, some positives, plug them into this formula of x squared minus 5, do the arithmetic, and get my ordered pairs. Or we could say, you know what, we have calculators that we're allowed to use in this class, let's go ahead and try that. So if I turn my little guy on here, clear this out, I'm going to go to my y equals, get rid of all that junk in there, and say, how about x squared minus 5, okay? I want to see what it looks like for most of these graphs. I want to try a standard window. So the quick way, remember, is zoom, number 6. There's the picture. Now I could eyeball some ordered pairs, but that's not very precise. We want specific values. So instead of the graph, we go right above at table, second graph to get to the table, and there I can go backwards or forwards and pick the ordered pairs. Then I have the precise values. So it's really up to you. If it's an easy equation, you might just do the arithmetic in your head. If it's a little messy, you might want to go ahead and use the calculator. Either way, we want to come back and then plot those ordered pairs and get ourselves a nice graph. All right, so here's another one. f of x equals the square root of x plus 4. Again, we're going to go ahead and pick some negatives and some positives. On this one, it's really interesting when we go to put this in our calculator here. It's kind of nice because you get a preview of the picture, x plus 4. This is going to be a half parabola, and it doesn't go on forever and ever in both directions. So you notice the graph didn't start until about right here. If I go to my table, I can figure out where that is. Because if I go backwards from negative 4, I start getting errors. And the reason is because if you try putting negative 5 in here, x plus 4 would be negative 5 plus 4, which is a negative 1. The square root of negative 1 is an imaginary number, and we can't graph that. So we would use our table to pick out some nice ordered pairs. Obviously, the negative 4, 0, the negative 3, 1. Then we skip the decimals until we get another nice one, 0, 2 and then 5, 3. Once again, we put those on our grid and we've got ourselves a graph. What about if we're given the graph and we want to do some reading from it? That helps me make sure that you really get the notation um, with these. So in this case, we have a graph here, this, this pink parabola or red, whatever you want to call it, and they're telling me to find the f of 3 value. Well, what goes inside the parentheses is an x, so when they're asking me to find f of 3, they're asking me to find the y value associated with x equals 3. So we've got some little helps on our graph here. Here's x equals 3. And then we go up from there to hit the graph. Where we hit the graph, we look over, and the corresponding y value is 4. So the answer to f of 3 would be 4. Similarly here for f of negative 2. We go back to negative 2 on the x-axis. This time we have to go down in order to intersect with the graph. Once we do, we look over and say, what's the y value? It's negative 1. All right, so one that doesn't have a help on there for us is f of 1. So here is 1. The graph, if I go up, I won't hit it, so I have to go down. And this is the point at which I hit it right here. And that's going to be over here at what would be negative 4. I could flip this around, and instead of giving you f of a particular x value, I'd say, what about f of x equaling negative 5? In this case, I've given you the y value, and I'm asking you to find the x value. So if I scroll this up a little bit, when I have a y value of negative 5, that's right here. The x value is on the y-axis. That means it's equal to 0. The next one's a little trickier. If I have f of x or y value equaling negative 3, that's along this line right there, not quite straight. But then I'm looking for where does it intersect. It actually intersects in two spots. It's not nice numbers, so I'm going to estimate that maybe this is about negative 1.5 for an x value, and this intersection here is about 1.5 for an x value. 